Hey everyone, today we've got two exciting topics for you. First is how we turn this interesting grid of different images into our top 10 model SDXL leaderboard. And secondly, I have a very interesting workflow for you to figure out the right angle for all of your characters for your scenes. Let's go check it out. Okay, first, let's get into the leaderboard. So a lot of people have asked, how do you rate all these new models that are coming out and how do they become top models and all that good stuff? Well, I have an interesting workflow. It's pretty complex and it's actually gotten a lot easier with a lot of the new nodes that have come out recently. But I do follow a pretty rigorous testing methodology in order to get to the final scores for each of the models. First of all, I actually score each model twice against every single test. So a lot of questions come up around, well, do it use only the same sampler or do you only use a single seed? I actually do multiple seeds and multiple samplers. So I typically will work with a 3DM++ exponential model uh, sampler first, uh, and then I will also do a, a Euler normal as well. And so I, you can see here, I'm using my fast group bypasser to do multiple rounds and I can easily flip them on and off. And uh, I basically run three different sets of tests. One as step level 25, then step level 65, and then finally the uh, 100 stepper. And then dimensions wise, I do the standard 1024 by 1024, then the 896 by 1152, so a little bit more like a three by four. Uh, ratio, and then finally the 1344 by 768. So there's a, definitely a good variety of horizontal and vertical orientation, uh, as well as levels of detail. Uh, the question also comes up, how do I figure out the right CFG level? Uh, well, I basically do a pre-sampling of different uh, sets of CFG and sampler and scheduler uh, values against a single model to get the right optimal view for that uh, set of images. So with that all being said, that takes us, I'm gonna zoom way out here, uh, into kind of what do we do to test all these models. Now, I wanna make sure if I'm testing general prompt adherence to test a variety of different scenarios that you would typically do in media creation. So if we go to the scoring sheet, uh, you can see there's a variety of different scenarios that I test to try to get the best sort of angles and types of images that people would want to create so that we can get the best overall average or understanding of how well the model does. So in this case, in zooming very quickly, you could see I do portraiture, so it's somewhat close up. Uh, I do different types of styles. So if there's watercolors in there, uh, hand usage, right? So uh, grabbing things, humans grabbing things to test if fingers are generated appropriately, pictures and pictures and different sort of stylings there. Uh, and each of these prompts gets more and more complex. So I add additional levels of subjects into there and different levels of details that I'm looking for as I'm searching for the best alignment of the prompts. And this spreadsheet, which is linked in the description, if you actually go into the spreadsheet, you can hover over any of these tests to understand what is the prompt that I'm testing for that uh, specific scenario, as well as any sort of negative prompting. And you can see, you know, it's everything from wide angle shots to portraiture shots, macro shots. Uh, I also have different sort of style shots. So using the mile high styler to see how well it reacts to that. Uh, also use different types of prompting. So for example, uh, the chat GPT style long form prompting, there's a very, very long test here as well. Uh, and uh, also simple prompting. So sometimes you just want to have like a cheeseburger. Uh, and so it's very, very simple prompts as well. So you could see testing in that element, testing different types of environments, uh, as well as animals, uh, also uh, high details. So different angles, right? From the floor, uh, facing away, high angle shots, low angle shots, to really get a sense of how well even different sorts of uh, modifiers to people's attributes. So like if it's raining, does your hair get wet? You know a lot of different common scenarios that you would want to do to get that average. Now, you can see there's three different sets of scores here. So each test is individually scored, and these are at the different sort of uh, step levels that we were talking about. So at the 
25 step level at the 65 step level and the 100 step level you know, with the different image dimensions so all that every single one of these scores is then at the end averaged up and based on that the most consistent best prompted hearing model that is as close to realism as possible that is where that score is now you could see down here at the tabs i'm actually going to be breaking out into additional test areas in the future uh first one's going to be around pure photorealism so how photorealistic is that image even though it may not be the most detailed prompt it is at least you know indistinguishable from reality which is obviously something that a lot of folks are looking for and then finally i'm also going to be getting into illustration anime and other sorts of illustrative uh, models as well so the final question is basically how do you score right you see fives fours three and a halfs etc right so it's basically a one to five scale fives are basically print worthy right you could throw it into a printer and throw it into a frame and it would look great um, fours are basically everything is there that was asked for in the prompt but there's some minor glitches some minor blemishes in the image and you can kind of tell things don't look quite right uh, threes generally are uh, missing major elements of the prompt uh, so let's say you have three major subject things that you expect in the prompt and it only shows you let's say one item so you're missing uh, many major items two you have missing prompt as well as sort of aesthetic uh, major aesthetic issues and one is basically either totally unrenderable or has some significant problems that you would just chuck it in the wastebasket and you can actually go right here and hover over the top left corner here and it actually talks through that testing methodology as well so I hope this was interesting uh, and let's now get into our second area okay so now that you know that we like to test different types of angles and shots and different sorts of scenarios so another thing that people have raised a lot is how do i know how to prompt and get to the right angle so i created this really cool workflow called the angler um, it's a very basic flow and i think i'll probably be expanding it into the future um, but essentially uh, we have you know a kind of a main prompt this is using our normal loader I have a normal generic sort of prompt with a woman sitting on a hallway bench uh, wearing a green blouse and you know once we render that it says you know here's the basic prompt so you can change this you can run it and then hit zero so if you hit zero these are all bookmarked and you can see I have the same subject but the woman is in different uh, angles so you have kind of straight up looking at you kind of a top-down version a bottom-up version side prompts close-ups etc so this is kind of cool and you can actually you know obviously click on this if you like but you can see there's a number in the corner so let's say I like uh this one all right so I want to see how this was done it says number three so I'm going to hit number three and it's going to go over to my prompt here and so basically I have a string concatenation this is in the various comfy UI nodes this is a custom node and uh you can basically see it's a pretty if I zoom way out right it's just all these individual images but uh it's just a quick reference but you could see uh right here I basically if I expand this out a little bit right uh we're basically doing uh, an LCM uh render uh but the thing you'll want to look for is this concatenation at the top because again we're using just that basic prompt at the very beginning uh that I showed you but we're also appending an extra set of instructions so in this case it's extreme bottom-up view looking at us from below and you can see I'm putting a pretty heavy weight on that 1.4 so now if you create your own prompt if you uh create it however you want but then add this information to your prompt extreme bottom up view etc cetera, etc cetera, um it should get the same sort of angle that we see over here so kind of looking up at you um and I've used this angling uh pretty successfully but the one caveat to note is that every model will use those instructions a little differently so sometimes models that are not as strong that's why we have that leaderboard uh, sometimes the models that are not as strong don't really react to those angles really well so something you should keep in mind as you're choosing different models and not to say that you shouldn't use other models that aren't as strong because they have their own special set of attributes one may be a type of style that is really exciting uh, or one might be more focused on you know uh, photorealism for example so you know those are definitely things that are valuable but as you're trying to figure out and create different content you're going to want to use the right model that are going to meet the needs of your media creation and if that is 
involving a lot of different angles of your characters, you're going to want to keep that in mind. So I hope this was helpful. And as always, please feel free to like and subscribe, and we will see you soon.